Hi, I'm Liz, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, with the Wasteland Collective. And I'm going to talk a bit tonight about my obsession with waste, my obsession even more so with land, and a few wastelands that we've collected about over the last year or so. Um, we've ha given wastelands a bit of a fresh think, and it's about time to. Waste is just an interpretation of resources and opportunities. We would say there's really no such thing as waste. After this short sequence of slides, I'm really hoping you all think a bit more differently about waste as well. I'd like you to be part of the growing number of people that see our, the possibilities and potential in urban realm a bit differently like we do. We set out to redefine what wastelands in urban settings are and to re-examine maybe the scale of the problem. I love this diagram here. I think it's really telling. Um, one of the most important things I take from it is how small the wedge for buildings are. I was really surprised by that. And I think it really illustrates, it highlights such an opportunity in urban settings. So we set out to find out what these spaces were that were lurking, the ones that are a little bit shy, the ones that we don't shout about and say, these are vacant and derelict and they're on a register, so we're gonna do something about them. We've got loads and loads of other streets and spaces. We set out on a bit of a campaign to make people think differently. It was good, it was good fun. Uh, we ran a series of exhibitions and workshops, which I'll talk a bit more about. Our starting point is really the question of whether it's only vacant and derelict sites that need our attention as designers, but also as civilians. So we got involved with lots of other thinkers, counsellors, people at SNH, Architecture and Design Scotland, and we started mapping out, collecting all of our interpretations to redefine things. It became a really involving process. So often we see land, urban land, as other people's responsibilities, and it's not. It's ours as designers, but also as civilians. One of our projects uh, was a participatory workshop, which we did with a group of school children from one of Edinburgh's peripheral estates. It, um, we wanted to seek to explore land's value. The project was called Our Natural Capital, and we produced from it a story map it's a story map which shows how children see their urban realm, their heritage, the resource, the value of urban land. We started telling stories and we wanted this image to capture some of the stories about what they see. Do you know, at the end of the project, we actually even came up with a manifesto for principles of better places, which is pretty empowering with a bunch of 15-year-olds from peripheral estates in Edinburgh. <laughs> I think we can start to think of land as a resource on all scales across the cities. I'm a landscape architect, so we always zoom right out before we think about the site. Some of these images work across the scales, coming from big city contexts right down to individual spaces, thinking about creating more rich, more connected, more humane spaces. Give me the next slide. <laughs> this project is about creating more tempting and enduring places. It's working with the land that's there, but it's working with the community that's there to pick up on a lot of what we've already been talking about. We wanted to make this land work harder for more people. And that's what we mean about wasted land. It's not doing everything it possibly could do. So we wanted to bring in lots and lots of different agenda. In this particular project, the focus is around community growing. But in some of the other projects we look at, we bring in all sorts of different agendas, whether it's for nature, whether it's for energy production, food growing, learning, flood prevention, or all of these things layered up. This is the same site, but with one of its, the focus was around potential, latent potential for energy production on a vacant site. And then um, the top one, shows a field of solar panels and the bottom one's miscanthus grass. How different are these places? How different are they for nature, for biodiversity, for the communities? So it becomes a bit about kind of pulling together these agenda, pulling together what they can be and what they can offer. We're working to collect wastelands, but we're working collectively as people as well. We don't just do it behind closed doors. We want to talk about it. We've hosted two exhibitions, a pop-up garden, at a market. We've helped run a series of participatory workshops. 
We're currently working with Architecture and Design Scotland to think about different ways of pop-up practice, which I think is really moving forward into the next level of what pop-up is. Um, and we're working with landscape architecture students to explore that. It just, there's a real energy, I think, behind this movement, as is evidenced by how many people are here tonight, which is a bit frantic, actually. Um, it's a real emerging practice, and it's an idea that I want to sort of bring to the forefront of landscape architecture, but also all of us as citizens. This exhibition was called Do It In Public, and all it was, it was about taking the streets, the spaces, the bus stops, the walk to school, the place where you stop and have a coffee, Think, rethinking everywhere and the potential so that no place is wasted, no street is wasted, no space, no matter how big or small, is all starting to layer up lots of different people's needs from our urban environments. This is a project that we did that just did these tiny, tiny little pinpoint interventions. We made these stools out of old pallets that took half a day. And look how people start to actually recolonize the spaces that they just walked past. It, we took a few photos and the most unlikely people where people really welcomed these hooks for urban living. And I think that's really starting to think about what our urban landscapes could be. Um, we've got a real job because we're working against, dare I say it, decision makers, planners, counselors, so on. But we've got to, we've really got to show what it could be. We can look to other projects or we can just get out there ourselves and start doing it. And I know that all the projects you're gonna hear tonight are from people that are doing exactly that. We've got such a potential to do that, let's grasp it. So if you want to see more about the Wasteland Collective projects, we've got a great blog site that's been kind of following these projects. Um, go and have a look at it, wastelandcollective.com. Thank you. Thank you.